This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series, where we meet Hawaii's farmers, foodies, and those shaking up Hawaii's local food system. Uh, we are here every Thursday, every other Thursday. We get here when we can, uh, four o'clock. And uh, we can also have you join the conversation, which we always enjoy. Uh, you can actually call in on the hotline, which is 808-374-374. 2014. And if you're more into tech savvy, which I'm really not, uh, you can tweet in at, at ThinkTechHI. And as always, you can watch the show over and over again uh, on YouTube. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? So as always, we have a great group of guests, and we actually have a special co-host today. Uh, we have Diane O'Neill. Uh, with Oahu Fresh yes, joining okay. us. Thank you. Thank for you so much for uh, yeah coming on and uh, joining us. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, truly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our guest today is Matt Chun. That is me. All right, who is with Eats? Eats, which already yes. sounds delicious. Even We're ready. Yes, it does. we don't tell anybody yeah. anything else. It just sounds right. It just it, it rolls off. It's 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 palatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, what I love about Eats and why we have Matt on the show today is you're really kind of combining technology sure. uh, with food. So why don't you go ahead and give us a little background. What is Eats? What is Eats? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, thank you for, for having us on the show. It's great. It's, we're really excited to be here. Uh, so Eats, you can think of Eats as the best way to find and order healthy food around you. Right, so we've built a, a mobile application that lets people easily find and order their favorite healthy foods wherever they are. Yeah. Cool, wait, so this is kind of like Papa John's where I can go on the app and order a pizza and then it shows up? Great. Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not into delivery yet. Okay. We're not doing delivery. You actually have to go into the establishments or mm -hmm. the restaurants. Um, some of the farmers that we're getting ready to bring on board, uh, guys like Daniel Anthony, they have specific pickup locations where you can go and uh, they'll, you know, drop the marker and you go there and you pick up their, their products. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why don't you talk, like, kind of take us through. What is so? If we were to go to the website right now sure. and download uh, the app, so I have the Eats app on my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, then, what is the experience like? What? Where do I go from there? What is the experience like? So, I'd say we've got a pretty good uh, onboarding experience. You know, we kind of let you know uh, what we're gonna, you know, what kind of information we're gonna need to kind of get you started. And then, right now, you'll actually go inside the application and you'll see. Uh, right now, we've mainly got restaurants on board. Okay. So, see a list of. of all the premier restaurants in Oahu, and you'll be able to uh, tap a few buttons and, and just go right into it and get your food. Okay. Yeah, so we like to think of it as, um, um, you know, what, a part of what we do is we let people skip the lines at restaurants, right? And it's about making healthy food accessible and convenient to everyone, right? So when you think about it, um, McDonald's is very easy to get, mm -hmm. right? They're all, around the, they're all around the island, every corner, yeah. arguably for us to get healthy food, mm. right? So we say, well, instead of you know going through a drive-thru, going into McDonald's where it's super convenient, how about you just tap a few buttons and we'll give you a, a healthy acai bowl um, mm. in, in the same or, or less amount of time. Okay. Yeah. So, so ha has the response from restaurants been really positive? Like yeah. has it been easy to onboard people and, and get them um, connected to the idea and excited sure. about it? It's, uh, it's actually, it's a little more difficult than we thought. Um, you know, we're, we're, we still kind of consider ourselves uh, in sort of a, a private beta, if you will, mm. just testing out with a, a few spots, make sure. very high tech. I yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're making it a... Uh, private beta, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really want to, um, we really want to make sure we nail it with our, 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 uh, our few restaurants that we have on board. Yeah. So that's actually a really, a really tough part is uh, um, getting the businesses on board. Mm -hmm. um, and c of course, when you're, when you're dealing with something that's a marketplace, um, you don't get much lenience from, from the business owners and uh, uh, users or consumers, if you will, uh, because you're transacting money, right? Mm. So when the business is, when we're the platform that's uh, dishing out payments, for example, uh, you know, we're, we're held to a little bit of a higher standard. But so far, it's been really good. We've been having some, uh, some good success. Yeah, we just reached about 1,300 users, um, oh. and uh, we just hit about actually um, $14,000 in processing volume. So $14,000 worth of orders have gone through the EAT system. So right. far, 
Yeah. It's pretty good for a beta. Pretty good for a beta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So private beta. Private, private beta. beta. Yeah, so you know, we got the we got a, we got we still got some kinks to work out, but we're getting there. We're right getting on. there. Yeah. So talk about the the kind so right now you're focused primarily with restaurants. Yes. So uh, I have the app and I can go on there and see uh, what restaurants are available. Right. Why as a consumer, why would I use the app versus just just going directly to the restaurant. Directly. Directly. Right. So this is uh, this is actually one of my favorite things to uh, to say is that yes. Uh, <laughs> we like to say it's um, if if you if you're going to use our platform, um, you know we, we actually charge the user a fee, right? So we charge you an extra two dollars to go in and have a seamless experience. You skip the line, you don't wait, you just walk in and your and your food's ready. Um, you can always make two dollars back, right? And always it's you know it's relatively easy to make two dollars. Um, but you can never get 20 minutes back. Oh, I like that. Right? So that 20 minutes, and, and you think about over a long period of time, the, the amount that, that you, you end up waiting or um, you know, going through the same process over and over again, especially if it's a spot you go to regularly, mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of time. And, okay. you, and you can't get time back. So we want to make sure, you know, I think in that aspect, we're empowering all of our users mm -hmm. to kind of uh, to give that little bit of freedom back. Cool. So, so I go into the app. I find and what what's like one of the restaurants that I could order from? So uh, I say the our best example is actually Nalu Health Bar in Kailua. Nalu Health Bar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They do. They have some of the best acai on the island, arguably. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, they do. They do really well on the East platform. Um, they've they've kind of nailed the experience. They were our first restaurant to actually come on board. Okay. Um, so they've had the most experience with it, um, and yeah, it's sort of becoming very flush. Okay. Yeah. And actually getting ready to open their uh, their second location in Ward in the South Shore Market. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's coming to so Eats is coming to town. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> literally, yeah. So I can go on there and I can see the Nalu Juice Bar. I can kind of uh, see their full menu. Right. And I can pick and choose what I want. Right. I get that the super acai bowl that you mentioned. Right. I check out and then I'm automatically uh, debited for the cost. Yep. And then I can go to Nala Juice Bar. Instead of waiting in line, there'll be like a there's a there's a special line for you. Yeah. Oh, a special. Line. Yeah, yeah. I guess kind of like Starbucks does something Bingo. similar. Exactly. I'm, I'm always kind of mad at those people. I'm like, how do they <laughs> yeah, have to go you know what? in front of me? And I've always wanted to be part of that group, but I just right. haven't wow. figured it out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can see secret. that guy sure. who skips the line at more healthy. And more healthy uh, establishments. Nutritious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know the first time that you and I met and you introduced me to the concept, which was actually at Small Kind uh, Mushroom Farm, shout mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Uh, He's been on the show before. Yeah, yeah there you Yang. go. Yang. Uh, um, I think it was our first. Yeah. No Yang way. and no Terry Shintaku from Green Growers. Yeah. Well, oh, our okay. first guest on the show. Full circle. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Circle, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. I, I, yeah, I get right. excited. Uh, thought stream here. <laughs> um, but it's about, that, it's about that experience once you leave the digital platform and actually enter the real space. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You were talking a lot about your concept and where the idea really came from, which is sort of transforming the... The actual locations. The actual experience right. that you have when you go to these restaurants. So... I mean, you're still in private special beta, so yeah. I would imagine that that's sort of a bigger, maybe long-term dream. Right, right. But do you want to? And so, yeah, yeah, talk that, about that? yeah. It's a uh, that's that's something that's pretty difficult to do, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's one thing to to innovate for um, for everyone that uses the application, but it's much harder to do for the businesses because we're essentially saying, hey, you know, if if at some point everyone orders through Eats, right, um, you wouldn't need a, a POS a register or a line at all. So, so what do those spaces look like, right? What are the, the places that we go on to eat? Um, it, it, so it, it more so turns into a, a sort of experience that you have inside. So after you have this great, this great digital experience, right? The app looks beautiful, works seamlessly. What happens when you get in the store, right? Um, and that's where we kind of want to, uh, to, to, to innovate as well um, because it's a whole different environment, right? You're, you probably have more live music. There's probably more arts and crafts. I mean, if you're not standing there in line, what are you doing, mm -hmm. right? There's probably more community tables where even if you're just going in by yourself, you can just sit down and uh, chat with someone new, have a conversation. Um, so the when, when you think about it in that sense, it's a very 
It's a very different experience. Yeah, just what it could be. I mean, imagine if you place your order or say you're on like a Valentine's Day date or something yeah. Yeah. and someone else places an order and then you show up and yeah. <laughs> like a table is set up for you already, yeah. you know? Like you don't even have to sit and order. It's it's all there. It's all there. Like you combine your like? Tinder date with <laughs> your Eats <laughs> app and it's all food. <laughs> And you're connected with somebody based on if you ordered similar things. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like where yeah, you're going yeah, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have lots of ideas for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I must say, I have used it in that case, you know, on a date. It's very impressive. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like okay, so. It's like you know people. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I know the chef. And, and, you know, you're giving everyone a fist bump. You're like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> um, it's much like, uh, one of the ways I like to think about it is, uh, say, look 500 years ago, right? It was either... We're going way uh, back. Yeah, we're going, we're going oh, back. Bash. We're going back. Uh, it was either... I vaguely remember. <laughs> like when you paid for things with salt. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to ask you, I'm gonna ask you to you close your eyes. Meet people at the club to get what you want. <laughs> uh, the good old days. Yeah, the good old days, right? Um, it was, uh, it was either you had a chariot or you didn't, right? You'd wake up in the morning. Oh, a chariot. You, yeah, okay, think about a chariot, right? You had a chariot, you're like, you wake up, you see Matt get in his chariot, you're like, wow, yeah. great, I've Matt. i got a nice chariot. Yeah, Matt, he's going to, to do the Think Tech show. Pipped out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at him on his way to do the Think Tech show, great, wow, where's my chariot, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah, now everyone can kind of uh, download a free app, right? Everyone can download Lyft. Uh, and in seconds, everyone has a private driver. So you can't really tell mm. where, then the, the line between wealth blurs. Oh, yeah. Oh. This is in, so you're okay. introducing like private chef. Almost. almost well, it's, that's what it could be, right? Yeah, it's a VIP experience, mm -hmm. right? Everyone, when you, when you sit in an establishment and you see the guy that walks in and he's high-fiving everyone, he's giving everyone a fist bump, you're like... I always hate that guy. Yeah, right? We all, we're all like, who is it's this guy? It's because you want to yeah. be that guy. Everyone it's, wants it's, to be that person. It's total jealousy. It's yeah. total jealousy, right? And you're like, well, who's this guy? Why does he get to do yeah. that? So how do you offer that experience to everyone? Mm. Mm. And you can do it with an application, it turns out. Yep. And it's around food, right? I mean, it's what's more universal, what's more enjoyed than food? Than food. Almost everyone has to eat. Right? Almost, well, there's, I, I guess there's a, a small percentage. Uh, maybe Matt's part of that, that that small group, but oh no no, I'm I'm all about the meeting. <laughs> Not me. mm -hmm. um, but that's 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 also so in, in in the grand scheme of things, when you look at technology, uh, a lot a lot everything is is either like white labeled. Um, it's very uh, everything kind of sort of looks the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we plan on doing something a little bit different, uh, and and that's what we're really excited to share. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's what's interesting. You don't really see the intersection between tech and food. Sure. You know. Yeah. That's awesome, guys. Uh, well, unfortunately, we got to take a quick break, and we're going to talk more about eat and kind of like the future, uh, the future of eat. The future of eat. I also want to hear a little bit more about your background, and how you got into this. So uh, we'll take a quick one minute break, and we'll be right back. Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark, and every Monday at 1 o'clock, I present Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, where we bring together researchers from across the campus to describe a whole series of scientifically interesting topics of interest both to Hawaii and around the world. So hopefully you can join me 1 o'clock Monday afternoon for Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. some photos that'd be great and we're back to Hawaii food and farmers series I'm your host today Matt Johnson where we talk to Hawaii's farmers foodies and people just doing really cool things with food uh, and we have our co-hosts here with me today Diane thank you so much for jumping in such a pleasure <laughs> and 
we have our host today, Mr. Matthew Chun, with Eats. So we're talking all about the app that you can use to order really good, healthy food and have it waiting for you when you go to the restaurant. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so let's jump right back into it. Let's do it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about one, like how how do the restaurants that you work with, how does that relationship happen? Like, can any restaurant get on there? Is there certain criteria right, they need right. to meet? Um, what 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 does that look like? Yeah. So this is the uh, this is the most exciting part for us, oh. right? So uh, we do <laughs> we do have a set of criteria. Um, it's not um, it's not uh, quite set in stone yet. But we do want to make sure we're focusing on businesses that are locally sourcing, or organically sourcing their ingredients, yes. right? We really want to put, and that's why the platform is actually called Eats. When you think about Eats, mm -hmm. it's actually, we're focused on the food, mm -hmm. right? And this is something that we want to do differently, right? Was we were, um, in a previous conversation, we were talking about how technology sort of always looks the same. It's really hard to differentiate yourself. Um, so what's the thing that we're doing differently, right? And there's, there's a ton of applications where you can go on and order your food ahead of time, mm -hmm. there's delivery services, there's, yeah. there's a ton of them. Um, but what's different about them? When you look at it, not so much, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's where we want to shine. Um, and so we're actually getting ready to show people where their food is coming from, mm. right? So when you, go, when you go on Eats, right, and you, you, you explore a restaurant, you see their menu items, um, we're going to show you where all the ingredients came from. We're going to show you where the greens came from. If they came from a local farmer, it's going to have a local badge. If they're using organic produce, it's going to have an organic badge. Um, and so, and you know, as they uh, add more badges, they'll go higher up in the search. So we're incentivizing the businesses to transition into more locally sourced or ingredients and organic ingredients. Um, and giving people, I think that's what's going to be most empowering about what we're doing. Sure, we've got the convenience. It's real. It's really. It turns out it's real, real easy to do uh, mm -hmm. convenience with technology. Um, but giving people information that really empowers them, right? We used to live in a world where uh, we all we, we knew who was growing our food and we knew where it was coming from and we knew it was uh, it was Pono. Like that 500 years ago when we were when we were still riding in our chariot. When we were still mad at you for riding in your chariot. Uh, <laughs> Goes mad again on yeah. his chariot <laughs> every morning. Flipping everyone the bird. <laughs> just want to be him. Yeah, yeah. Just, right. Just envy that guy. Um, and so, yeah, empowering people with that information about, you know, being connected to their food mm. is extremely important. And that's something that we want to bring back and show people, hey, this, this, you know, this farmer, this person is putting a lot of time and effort into making sure that you're getting the, the most nutritious food possible. And it turns out that arguably the most nutritious food is the food that's right around you. Mm. Um, you know, it doesn't have to travel as far. You know, the, the, the emissions that are accounted for, the true cost of the food is actually a little bit lower as far as emissions go and, and how, how it gets to you. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. I would think it could be really encouraging for local restaurants to invest more in local food too and maybe even non-local restaurants to invest in local food because with that level of transparency Bingo. and the fact <clears throat> that the consumer is able to see where their food is coming from, especially if your algorithm or the way it's set up is going to push them higher on the, right. um, the, the viewability piece of it. Um, it seems like it would encourage the desire to have more locally oriented food and that as a tool um, combined with all the other efforts that are leading towards the, the food sustainability here. Yeah. It, it just seems like it's, um, I don't know, just a really good way to to bring that conversation Absolutely. forward more, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, it's the, um, it's, uh, you know, that's our incentive is saying, hey, you know what, the more you locally source, the more organically you source your ingredients. Mm -hmm the more business we're going to bring you, right? Yeah. And so that's very empowering. You know, then they start weighing it out. Well, whoa, if I, you know, if I put this local badge on, on my ingredients and, and we can verify it and we can mm -hmm. show that, um, it's going to bring me more business. And yeah. So it providing, empowers, sorry. Yeah, providing the incentives yeah. behind that, yeah. um, I think, is what the, uh, the local food movement is kind of missing. Mm -hmm. There's no really true incentives. I mean, you're going to pay a higher premium for the food. Yeah. Uh, other than you just get to showcase, hey, we, we, we source locally. Yeah. Right? So there's, there's no incentives that back that. So right. we want to be that. And it empowers the consumer to make more wise decisions about where they're putting their money. You know, because I think that all of us, whether it be food or clothing or any sort of goods, you know, right. we want to spend our money for the most part on things that we believe in and things that are ethically sourced and um, locally supportive. So it's it's giving people the power to be able to do that in a more convenient, easy, um, and simple way. Absolutely, so it's, it's dope. Yeah, <laughs> it's like pimping out your food experience. <laughs> hey, Almost thanks. like pimping out your chariot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which she definitely did. 
You definitely yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. So Matt, let's talk a little bit about uh, you. Okay. Um, how did, uh, we've heard a lot about the Eats, but how did you get into this? What's your background? Yeah, how did I get who into this? You? Yeah, who am I? Who oh man, that's a, that's a great question. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, I grew up in, in Las Vegas, Nevada, or I grew up in Nevada. Um, flashy. Flashy, yeah, the flashing lights, right? The city definitely doesn't sleep. <laughs> Um, and then it's kind of a food desert out there as well. There's not as much access uh, to, 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 to great food. Yeah. Um, and actually, after I graduated from high school, I decided to move out here. Um, and from here, I was... Congratulations. <laughs> Good decision. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to come here every summer growing up. So I am, I am Hawaiian. I am, I'm Hawaiian Chinese. Um, so I used to spend every summer here growing up as a kid. And then after I graduated from high school, I said, let me, let me take the jump and, and, and uh, see what we can do. And I sort of had the inspiration already for... For building technology, right? Mm -hmm. I saw. I still see it as the best way to empower individuals, mm -hmm. and empower you know organizations as a whole. Um, and I, uh, I was spending a lot of time actually with my my stepdad, okay. who's one of the biggest uh, advocates for organic food and knowing where your food comes from. So I got to spend a lot of time with him, and um, we would go to Whole Foods, Kakua Market, uh, and and Peace Cafe. Actually, those okay. are, those are our daily route. Yeah. And so I was helping him with his business, with his, with his, uh, with, um, I was managing his web presence, and uh, he's the one that kind of sparked the inspiration for 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 food, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I got the idea. And when I came with the idea, I actually moved to uh, Palo Alto. Okay. I moved to San Francisco because yeah. I figured I had to be in Silicon Valley. This is where technology is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I moved out there, and I was actually sleeping at the airport for about two months. Dang. Yeah. Two months sleeping at the airport. Two months sleeping at SFO, baggage claim. So my mother's actually a flight attendant. Yeah, it's funny. I've actually spent just one night at the baggage claim <laughs> okay. at SFO. Yeah. Uh, so I can kind of relate. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At baggage claim. They have these two. They have these couches that are operators. They're they're plus operands. And you just piece them together and you mm. lay down. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Starbucks right upstairs. You get hot water, make some tea. Um, and then I would take the bus down at 5 a.m. in the morning to Palo Alto from okay. SFO. Months. Yep. About, yeah, roughly. I had, I had one night in an airport myself, and I cannot say that I liked it. <laughs> it was, uh, one of those silver blankets, like one of the survival blankets. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the warming, yeah, the, I know yeah, what I mean, a very, like, Steve you. Jobs story to yeah. it, like, I yeah, started in a garage, and <laughs> yeah. I slept at the airport, yeah. and... This is going to be in a book one day, probably. Yeah. Humble beginnings. Could be, humble beginnings, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. That's what it takes, though, you gotta, you got to have a story. Right. I mean, that's, um, and, uh, yeah, I would take my, uh, I would go, and I bought a gym membership, Mm -hmm. I had a duffel bag and a backpack, okay. yeah. and I put all my stuff in there, my apples, my bananas, protein bars, and I would work out, shower, and uh, actually I would sneak into classes at Stanford. Nice. Okay. I was sneaking into programming classes, because I didn't have, the, I didn't have the, the skills to, yeah, yeah. to, You're to build. You're just auditing it. Yeah, yeah, I was just dropping in, yeah. auditing <laughs> classes, right? You know, the schedules are all online, you can see them. Yeah. I was like, oh, this looks nice. Um, and just talking to anyone I could about, uh, about you know, who could maybe help build the application, uh, who could point me in the right direction. Um, and after some exploring there, I actually bought a car, and then I was sleeping in my car. Okay. Um, and then uh, th uh, eventually the car broke down, and I figured that was my time to go. Mm. I was like, okay, you know what? I, I learned my lesson. And then after that, I just decided, well, I didn't find anyone, um, so let's go ahead and build it ourselves. And uh, taught myself how to do all the engineering and uh, built the first version of the application. Yeah. And here we are. And here wow. we are. That's a cool story. Yeah, I feel like we should just yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead and applaud you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good. That's awesome. So that was kind of the, the, the beginning of Eats and then brought it out here mm -hmm. um, and kind of take the, the Facebook approach. You know, they started, they started at Harvard mm -hmm. and then went to only Ivy League schools and then they gave the, the software to the world. Um, we're, we're doing the same thing here. Is we're, we're bringing it, we're testing it out here. Mm -hmm. and. You know, to me personally, Hawaii lacks on the innovation side. Mm. I think we need more entrepreneurs here. We need more, uh, um, more systems that kind of uh, that, that that culture entrepreneurs and, and really, especially for, for the, the local community. How do we bring them up as a whole um, to to kind of uh, to yeah to bring the idea here to innovate here first, and then once we got everything working, we can take it to the world. Yeah. Cool. So this is our little this is our little test bed, and so we get to you know bring. Innovation to I think the people that need it most. Right on. Yeah, yeah. And so you guys, are, 
Now, are you already testing in other markets, or are you just focused here in Hawaii right So now? we did do a little testing in L.A. Okay. Um, L.A. is going to be big for us. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every, the health craze is real. Hey, Everyone hey. wants to be healthy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a badge of honor, um, and people are always on the go. Yeah. So the big cities, of course, they're going to be huge for us, um, and we're actually... Um, yeah, we have we have plans to, to be worldwide. We think Europe's going to be very very big. Uh, so yeah, we've got a spot in LA. Okay. That does pretty well. Yeah, right. So it's, it's exciting. It's exciting, but it's a whole different beast. It's yeah. a whole the mainland, Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, very very different. Okay. Yeah. So what's your um, kind of next steps here? Uh, where do you want each to go, or where do you think it's going to be when we have you back on the show a year from now? Mm -hmm. A year from now, that's a great question. What, like, what, what is your, what would you want to be updating us on? What would I want to be updating us on for uh, a year from now? Um, milestones that we've hit. You okay. know, we, we, there's, there's a million people on island. Uh, you know, we. <laughs> We, we aim to probably hit, hit, hit mostly everyone here and, and give them the technology um, and kind of uh, show you guys what we're doing in the mainland now. I think in, in arguably six months we'll probably be in the mainland um, and, uh, and we hope to have the whole island cheering for us while we're out there venturing out and yeah. trying to uh, uh, make sure you know, we'll, be, we'll be telling the, the Hawaiian flag. Uh, so you know, this is our home base, this is where we're headquartered. Um, and yeah, so we hope that the island's just cheering us on as we, uh, as we, as we venture out. Yeah. Cool, right on. Just aim to hit those milestones. So what is your plan then to, like, do you have a large team of people on that are helping you, or is this just you just, like, <laughs> coding away like crazy all night? Like, <laughs> it was me for a long time. Okay. It was me, but I've had a lot of help along the way. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a something when you hear about entrepreneurs, and, oh, they did it all themselves. A, you get a lot of help along the way. Yeah, yeah. And now we've sort of built a, a very solid team of about four of us. Mm -hmm. um, and we plan to, uh, to do a lot with us four. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I think that's all the time that we have for today. Matthew, thank you so much for, uh, so much for having joining us. us and inspiring us with uh, your each application. I look forward to having you back here uh, next year to hear about all those milestones. Great. And mm -hmm. Diane, thank you so much for being an awesome co-host. You'll definitely be back. Thank you. Uh, on the show again. It's an honor. So uh, thank you once again, and we'll be back next Thursday at 4 o'clock. Aloha.